Hello my darlings and welcome, welcome, welcome to Jessie James Beads, the home of amazing beads and so much more. My name is Jem and I hope that today finds you very, very well. At the moment we've got thunder and rain and cold and it's a bit bleh. So let me know what the weather is like in your part of the world and also let me know if you can see and hear me well. And what you've been up to today? Have you been lucky enough to spend time making jewellery? What's going on? Let's make sure that that doesn't interrupt us. Making sure that the speaker's turned off. That's the most I've moved my arm all week. <laughs> so how are you? Give me a quick hello if you can see me. Please forgive the lack of hair do doing and makeup putting on today. Um, I'm down to one arm at the moment. And on that note, what I wanted to talk to you about today is how a very easy, simple technique will enable even those terrified of making jewellery it will enable you to make jewellery and it will not only enable you to make jewellery that's beautiful, but it will make jewellery that is changeable very, very easily. So if you are packing light, if you're thinking about your summer holidays, lucky you for one thing. Uh, but it's a great way to take a small amount of jewellery and have a different look every day. So today we're going to be working with the March Magical Mystery Bead Box. I've got Anne in from rainy California. Well, if it's raining in California, I feel a little bit better about the dreary ick that's out there. Laurie says, hello, everyone. Hello, my darling. Where are you calling in from today or where are you watching from today? I should say I hope that you are both doing very, very well. Do let me know that you can hear me OK. And what I'm going to do is just pop you down to the board and I'd like to introduce you to what is in this month's glorious magical mystery bead box for March. Cherie is in. Hello, Gem. I hope you are feeling better. It's coming. It will happen soon. Laurie's watching from Chile, Iowa. Yeah. Oh, the weather's not great. It seems like winter's going on forever. But soon, my friend, soon it will be a little bit brighter, I hope. Let's have a look at the beautiful card that came along with today's beautiful magical mystery bead box. So strawberry fields. I won't sing because it's never really good when I sing. <laughs> I, I've been banned from singing in my place of work. I don't have a great singing voice, but there we are. So Strawberry Fields is our theme. And in this box, we have got a whole bunch of beautiful, beautiful things. Here we are. Freshly picked beads, Strawberry Fields, Strawberry Blooms, Rose Gold Findings set, which we're going to use. Sweetheart's bead strand, strawberry lampwork bead strand, which is gorgeous. I'm going to show you all these in a sec if you've not seen them. Strawberry Forever Heshy bead strand, milk dip dyed tassel pair, rose gold chain trio. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to see that. Ready to bloom, AB, that's Aurora Borealis pendants. Not only that, but the strawberry seeds rose gold spacer set. So that's our ingredients list. This is an absolute boon. Wonderful to have that in rose gold. We commonly work with silver and gold colourways. I love a bit of rose gold and it seems perpetually fashionable. So in the findings kit, you have got disc shaped head pins. You have got ear wires with that ball end to them. You have got two packets here. One which has got the small bolt ring clasps which work with all of the chains there was another clasp in there but i have temporarily mislaid it and you've also got two sizes of jump rings in this bag as well so something like this is an absolute boon for a jewelry maker especially if you're looking to make a little capsule jewelry so i'm just going to keep that to one side because we will be using it gabriella is in saying hello everyone now i unwrapped one of these because i want you to see how absolutely glorious they are it's an ombre ombre or a dip dye and the quality that you can feel in the fabric is gorgeous absolutely delightful you could very simply pop those onto one of those simple ear wires and you've got beautiful tassel earrings or you can make yourself a marla necklace 
strawberry fields look at these cute little charms so you could use these strawberries you could use the beautiful pink strawberries you've got beautiful lucite flowers with another coating over the top i love it says gabriella they are gorgeous aren't they and it's a beautiful spring color blend there can't wait for the weather to match that blend of beads let's see what else we have check these out gorgeous lamp work beads with some of my favorite little sideline pieces you might think but i adore these heavy metal large hole spacer beads look at those they're fantastic in everyday jewelry for adding a little bit of oomph you've got some really cool spaces on there as well as those very showy offy lamp work beads a gorgeous strand indeed let's see oh my goodness have you seen this? Sweethearts, look at this incredible heart. How absolutely stunning. And I love these bead caps on the peachy toned beads there. They remind me of Padparadja blossoms. That's a very striking strand indeed. Did you see the beady beads? These are beady beads. So it's a bead made of beads. They are very cool. You can make simple beady beads yourself, but it's always great to have them ready picked for you. So we have got those spacers and beads in there. So it's like a daisy shape spacer and loads of those beautiful rounds. Again, in that rose gold colorway. These are fabulous and combined with the findings pack and the chains, so much jewelry can be made from this months mmbb alone so i have harvested some of these strawberry blooms beads and i'm using them today in our demonstration which is a simplistic demonstration but in here you get some more spacer beads you've got rhinestone rondelle beads you've got i imagine these are like a paper string bead that's wrapped they feel fabulous you've also got the world's glitteriest strawberry there so i'm going to be using some of those beads today along with other bits and pieces from the magical mystery bead box sheree says love 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 this box and everything that goes with it absolutely 100 percent these are gorgeous look at those look at the sheeny shine on them double-sided as well i don't know if you saw the necklace that i made on a recent youtube which had three flowery leafy drops involved those would be perfect to team with that design those strawberry beads are amazing aren't they can i still get the box gabriella you absolutely can i've popped a link in the video description for you to go forth not only can you choose from a variety of types of subscription for the magical mystery bead box do check out the link and you'll find all that information i've also popped a link on to pick up this box which is now known as a former box so there's a small availability on those if you pop over on the link below the video description you will be able to find all of these goodies these are your heshi beads so they're lots and lots of fun endlessly remind me of i don't know if it's the same in the united states but when i grew up during the 1980s there used to be a piece of jewelry called a sweetie necklace and it was little rings of sugar candy on a string and you'd wear it and you'd crunch on it from time and every now and again you'd end up with rotten teeth <laughs> but we had necklaces that looked like this that you could eat it was terrible liz is in from southeast Mich michigan how are you today i hope those beautiful puppies and kittens that you endlessly help to find homes for are doing well today and last but far from least the rose gold chain trio so you have three chains in a trio obviously <laughs> you have got the large paper clip chain and this is where i added that extra clasp that was in the findings mix i wanted to show you let's slide that one out so very very simply i have just added that clasp from the findings mix to the paper clip chain and it's good to go it's beautiful colorway again with that rose gold shine that works so well with everything strawberry the kitties and the puppies are doing well i've also got a heart link chain which i have used a fair amount of i'm going to leave that up just in case i decide decide even that we need some more 
We've also got a super fine chain. Now, I tend to make jewellery that is quite large, quite showy. But sometimes I'll be tempted to make a diminutive little pendant. And a diminutive little pendant looks a bit funny on a massive paperclip chain. So it's really good to have that third style. Now, this looks for all the world like a diamond cut chain. So what can I say? Absolutely gorgeous. Those three chains, ever so, ever so useful. And I was playing with cutting the links on that one earlier as well. Anne says, I love this month's Magical Mystery Bead Box. I remember the candy necklaces. Good, it's not just me then, folks. Let's have a look at the earrings that I've designed for you today. Now, one of the reasons we are looking at this jewellery is that I want everybody, even somebody who's never so much as picked up a strand of beads or looked at a pair of pliers before, to feel that they can make jewellery. Now, I think these are cute. I think they're very, very cool. But one of the best things about a design like this is that they're completely changeable. So what I'm going to do is just show you a couple of things first of all. If you very, very softly open up your earring finding, especially if you pop a little warmth into it first, you can very easily slip that chain off the top. So you can instantly make that look different by moving whereabouts that hanging section happens. So I think that's adorable to have that solo little spaceship, little saucer bead down at the bottom on that great big long length of those hearts. And then you've got a little rod, which we're going to make together in a moment. Then you've got a connector. So you can ultimately change this around as much as you want to. Just the only real thing that you need to look at is whether or not it's going to hang well. So if you can't get it over the ball end on your earring finding, you can take that in from the other direction and then you can hang that down. So I think that's a little bit clunky maybe. So I might keep that in a slightly different orientation. But again, it's a different pair of earrings instantly. Laurie says, love them. Gabriella sent us all a great big pink heart. That's delightful. So let's take this again off the shallow end of that earring finding. So if you can't get it over the ball end of the head pin that's been used to make this earring finding, you can always go from the other end. And again, if you want to, you can add that on at a very different part of that chain. And all we're doing is moving where we're hooking. So these are very, very long, glamorous earrings now. Hair up, evening out, bare neck. We're going for, I don't know, maybe a bandeau top and no necklace. We're all about the earrings with this design. So it's the same piece, three different ways. And that's just to begin with. So you can obviously play around with a design like this to your heart's content. So let's just pop that together over on that side. So there are, is basically a single technique to learn other than sliding your chain or your links off the earring finding itself. Let's see what that looks like with just the one piece up at the top. If it doesn't look right, you can always take it off again. So that's a very elongated earring drop. And you don't have to have that many links in your earring drop. You can mess around with shorter lengths, longer lengths. It's also a great way of using up little bits. If you make yourself a necklace or a bracelet with one of these, you often end up with two or three little heart links. They're perfect for earring drops. So that, again, is a very different looking earring to the one we had a second ago. And just by moving that along, even to the other side of that little connector. Let's pop that on in a different place. Easy as pie, so they say. Mind you, I can't make pastry. I'm rubbish at making pastry, so I don't think pie is easy at all. Nor is that scientific pie, you know, the circly one, 3.14, whatever, whatever, whatever. I really don't know, not a mathematician. So let's have a look at the basic techniques for making these kinds of earrings. So I've grabbed some of those head pins. Let me show you where they came from. Inside this month's Magical Mystery Bead Box, that's March 2024. Strawberry fields forever. You've not only got chain, you've got the rose gold findings. 
let me just make the arm move and you've also got these let me just spill a few out so you can see the different pieces so you've got plenty of both the little daisy shape spacers and these perfect round spacer beads now i've been making jewelry for well over a decade now about 14 years and there are spacer beads and then there are spacer beads so these have a beautiful perfectly round finish and a high shine quite often what you'll find is that the spacer beads are a little bit on the let's go with rustic side and actually that's fine rustic beads are great but today i want those perfect rounds so you've got earring findings to work with we've got chain to work with and we've got some of those lovely disc shape head pins now if you've never ever worked with jewelry before this is a head pin they come short, they come long, they come with very thick metal and they come with slightly finer metal. So this is a disc head pin. It's got that little disc on the end there. And sometimes that will go all the way through a bead. Now I happen to know that this head pin, if I pull it hard enough, which I can't do today because I've damaged my arm, uh, it will go all the way through because this is a quite a large hole, which is very, very useful. However, if you want to use this head pin with this bead, what we can do is employ some of those spacers. So let's move those beads over and you can play around with what order they go in. You could try and see if that disc is large enough to stop the bead falling off the bottom, that spacer bead looks good and safe. So you could choose to just go for the spacer bead. Or you could add in another bead above and just add a, an extra dimension. So this is all about you expressing yourself through jewellery without any special skills and very little in the way of equipment. So far, we've just got a head pin. So let's pop on a bead, shall we? Why don't we put this one into position? And if you wanted to change this piece into a small short dropper, all we're going to do is a very simple loop. So I'm going to grip with my any flat facing pliers will do. I'm using bent chain nose pliers because it's easier to show you what's happening. I can turn that over and you can see from above that I'm turning the wire away at about 45 degrees. And all we're going to do now is add a small loop up at the top. Now, when you're working with earrings, we're not working with pounds and pounds and pounds of material. If you're making a very heavy necklace, you may prefer to go for a wrapped loop. That's not for today. Today, we're about simplicity. We're about encouraging people to try making jewellery who maybe have never made jewellery in their life. So let's find some round pliers. Ooh, so I have these fantastic beadle on basic rounds and what they will do is serve the purpose perfectly. The reason I have my memory wire pliers is because you can make repeatable loops throughout your suite of jewellery. What you may notice if you don't have those memory wire pliers is on your round nose pliers you can pop a marker pen and then you can make again repeatable sizes with that loop. So what we're going to do is to rotate the pliers around towards the angle change that we made in that head pin. So we've got half of a circle so far. We're going to pop those pliers back in and then draw that wire. Let's just turn that over slightly all the way around until it too crosses over that angle change. Now, can you see how that's not in, it's not perfectly round. So I would be unhappy with that. So I put those pliers back in and give that a little bit of a pull. I don't have any real grip strength in my left hand at the moment because I've damaged my shoulder. So that is what one of the reasons I'm coming live with you today is because I want to show you that even if you're struggling, earrings in the simplest possible way with especially this gorgeous magical mystery bead box for march are perfectly achievable so i've just trimmed that wire away at the point where it crosses over the angle change when it came out of that bead and i'm just going to take a second to make sure that that last little section of wire just meets the angle change and all I'm doing is I'm using my dominant hand which still works just to get that finished up and then I'm going to put some strength into 
that loop that we've just created. Now, if you struggle with grip strength on both hands, what you can do is allow the desk to help you. So I've put the circular form inside the mouth of my pliers and I'm going to press down. Now, this is a, just a little bit of a balancing act, but you don't need much in the way of grip strength. And what I'm doing is strengthening that loop that we've created. So let's grab hold of one of these lengths of beautiful rose gold colour heart chain from that heart, from that chain trio. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the loop we've just created as if it's a jump ring. So we're going to grip half of that loop and pull that up and away. If I just turn that sideways, you can see that there's now a gap. And I'm going to pop the end of the chain into position. And then we're going to repeat in reverse. We're going to close that loop back up. And again, I'm really struggling with my left hand and my left arm at the moment. So this is purely a demonstration to show that even if you are struggling, if you have a dominant hand and then one that's a little bit ropey, perhaps you can still make some jewellery even when you're on downtime. So that's one part of our design for today. So let's have a look at what else we can do. So let's grab some of those jump rings. I thought I'd put some on the desk. I obviously hadn't. So let's find those out. Let's also show you how you can add detail to chain with these lovely little bolt ring clasps. They're great for closing up the ends of necklaces and bracelets, but they're also great for adding charms. So why don't we make a little charm that we can then add on to our earrings? So let's pop one of those out of the packaging. By the way, I keep all of my packaging and I will reuse it until the end of time. We are kind of renting plastic from Mother Nature because it doesn't really degrade. So when you get these, they are very, very useful. So please do make sure that you try to reuse them if you possibly can. So let's make a little charm now. So I'll just pop these over to one side for a second. And shall we make a charm with this beautiful ladybird? So this is double-ended. So much like the white flower here, you can use this as a connector, as I have done in this design. So why don't we make this into a charm to begin with? Let's grab one of the smaller jump rings. Oh, I wonder, are there three sizes? Oh my gosh, I think there might even be three sizes. How lovely. That's really handy. You'll always be able to find one that works. So what we're going to do, before we open the jump ring, we're going to make sure that it closes perfectly. And this again is to help people who've never made jewellery before have a go. So what I'm going to do is just open and close my pliers very gently on that jump ring. And I've added a little bit of strength to it so that when I open it, and again, all the work is happening with my right hand at the moment. I can open that up. You can see the little gap there now. When I return that jump ring to its first position, because I strengthened it first, it's going to hold that shape a little bit better. So let's find that little bolt ring clasp, slide the hoop onto that jump ring. And I'm now going to grab a second pair of pliers just to close that jump ring up properly. So I'm going to grip the second side of the jump ring. You'll have to excuse the movements of my left arm. It's not fully functional. <laughs> so if I show you, that's still open at the moment. If I pull those out of the way, you can see you've still got a gap there. So we're just going to close that up until it sits neatly back in its original position. And then we'll give that a little bit of a squish just to make sure it's good and strong. So you've now got a little charm. So what we could do is go to one of our earrings that we already made. Let's grab this one, I think. Just pop that up and out of the way for a moment. So we've got our capsule earrings here. We've got a long piece of chain with beads and then a connector and a bead rod on this side. We can make that look different yet again without doing too much extra work, just by adding that charm onto the earrings. Now you may prefer a slightly less clustered look, which is absolutely fine because you then have the opportunity with your little assortment of bits and bobs to just make a pair of earrings. Now you can open this up or you can operate that bolt ring clasp as you prefer. I've put that on the wrong way round. What an absolute mad lad. There we go. <laughs> Turn that over 
and you've got a cute little pair of instant earrings which you can change to your heart's content. So the last piece of demonstration that we're going to do today is just how to make a slightly longer bead drop like this one. And then I'm going to add that to the other end of our chain that's got that little white beautiful bead on at the moment. The feel of these is absolutely gorgeous. It is a very sweet ladybug. So again, you may find that your bead, your chosen bead, fits perfectly onto the stem of your head pin. And you may find that you don't need to add anything to the bottom. However, I always think it looks really nice if you do. So let's add one of those gorgeous rounds. Sometimes your little spacer bead will fall off the end because the hole is larger than the disc. If that happens, you've got your little daisy shaped spacer beads which have a smaller center. So let's just put a stack of beads on, shall we? I think I really like these massive bicones. I'm not sure if they're six mil or eight mil. I don't have my little measury thing with me, but they are glorious. Can you see? myriad of sparkles in that faceting it's gorgeous it's actually a lot pinker than it looks on screen if i put my finger behind it it doesn't really do it any favors but in real life it's got a beautiful pink almost morganite hue so i think we're going to add a, another one of those little rounds above and then maybe we'll add one of those little daisy spaces as well if i can grab one do 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 it's gone into this little angel wing pot. It doesn't want to come out. There we go. So you might not like the order in which I've placed those on. And in fact, I don't think that I do. I think I'm going to put the daisy spacer in the middle. And then the bicone. And then the round to finish it off. That looks a little bit better, doesn't it? That's the beauty of making your own jewellery is that you can 100% chop and change. So again, we're going to go for just a very, very easy, simple loop. And I'll show you this time, instead of with those round nose pliers, which are perfectly adequate if they are what you have, I'm going to show you how easy it is with those memory wire pliers, just to rotate that wire all the way around at the top of that stack of head pins. If the beads would like to stop moving around, that would be awesome. And what you can do with your memory wire pliers is just continuously get that same size loop. I think they're magnificent. So I'm going to trim that away. And then as we did earlier, we're going to make sure that the loop forms perfectly. Now that's slightly on the wonk, so over to one side. So I'm going to just give that a little bit of a straighten up before I strengthen the loop itself. And then I'm going to pop that on the other end of my little chain. And then we can close that up. Now I'm just using my hand to hold that. You could employ that second set of flat pliers. I have a pair of standard straight chain nose pliers there. Perfect for the job. And then what we're going to do is find an earring finding. Find a finding. Dear oh dear. And I'm just going to loop that on somewhere along the chain. And we've just made another very, very simple earring. So this is a technique which absolutely everybody can have a go at, even if you're struggling health-wise at the moment. Give it a go. You may find it super simple, super easy. And then if we slip that off for a second, put that a little bit further down, it looks very different immediately. And why don't we operate this bolt ring like a proper person, like a proper jewellery maker? And I think I want to add that onto our new earring. Let's slide that in just there and see what that looks like. Well, that's quite cool. Pop that back onto your earring finding and you can pinch that together a little bit if you feel the need. Depends whereabouts you want that to hang. So I think I preferred that with the white bead a little bit further away, to be honest. But again, you've got an endless amount of time to play. This is a, a beautiful capsule jewellery design as well. Oh, I like that. That looks cool. That kind of splayed out, just ever so slightly different levels. So you've got lots of options on how you can make your multi-purpose capsule earrings. And I think that you'll agree that Strawberry Fields is a gorgeous gorgeous collection so do check out the links 
I popped them down at the bottom of the video description so you can have a look at the entire Jesse James beads range. There's also a link there for you to check out this month's magical mystery bead box, which is Strawberry Fields. Or you can head on over and find a subscription that works for you. I'm Gem Hawks. I have been with you today for Jesse James Beads. I hope that you are inspired to have a go at jewellery making, even if you've never had a go before. Very, very simplistic designs today to just enable you to create that capsule earring collection that you can chop and change however you want to. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I look forward to coming back with you. Now I've got some dates. I'll be back with you on the 11th of April, live with, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, a beautiful floral mix. I look forward to seeing you then. That's the most my arms moved all day. <laughs> you guys take care and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye for now.